It's Wednesday, March 13th. Harvey Couch, what's on the show today? Oh, it's a big show. And I mean, you're on a show on a Wednesday, which is yeah. always a special treat. It's yeah. nice. But uh, we, got plenty, we got plenty of guests. We got uh, Joey Thacker here. Big night tonight for the Lady Flyers uh, in the Sweet 16. And then we've got uh, Brent Wallace and Shelby Harper from the YMCA to, uh, to talk about what's going on with us. youth sports coming up. All right, let's start the show. Round 10 is brought to you by Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher. You need realtors who can help navigate the current fast-paced real estate market. So choose local realtors that treat you like family because real estate is what they do and families are why they do it. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Around 10, Frankfurt's Morning Show. I'm Scott Stafford. Next to me, it's Harvey Couch. Happy Wednesday morning, Harvey. Hey, how's it going, Scott? I feel like we have not done the show together in like months. It's been a while. It's been a while. You're a man on the go. (laughs) Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Maybe you've just been avoiding me. Who knows? Maybe. Uh, At the top of the show, we like to do a little chit-chat, but Mm -hmm. I think probably what is on our minds more than anything is probably basketball these days. It it is March, as you said at the beginning. If we're going to talk basketball, why not just bring in our guest right now? What do you think? I think we should. Coach Joey Thacker is here, uh, coach of those Franklin County Flyers. How are you doing? Doing all right. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, first of all, you know we're headed to another Sweet Sixteen, right? Right. And yeah. we're gonna we're gonna talk all about that. Okay. Uh, but I, I'm gonna pick your brain a little bit about some some other things. Uh, we we do a question of the day here, Coach, and uh, we're asking today. What's your favorite basketball team of all time? Now, that doesn't mean the Celtics. Well, why, don't we, why don't we say, like, you, no Lady Flyers allowed. Okay. We'll get you off the okay, hook. Yeah. So you don't have to pick <laughs> yeah. a season of your okay. favorite season yeah. of Lady Flyers. I got you. Uh, so if you want to go pro with this, you can. But, I, you know, I'm kind of looking college. I mean, this is, uh, you know, this is, this is March Madness time. But, uh, yeah, so I'm looking for a specific year, like, you know, a specific group of like guys that, that you love. That was your squad that you enjoyed watching more than anything. Um, I'm going to let I'm going to let Joey think about okay. it for a minute because yeah, yeah. we're, we're popping it on him. Yep. Uh, what about you, Harvey? You got something? Well, uh, first thought. And, you know, it's funny whenever these things come up, it's like it always goes into my sweet spot of mm-hmm. like when I from like age 13 to 17. Yeah. And so for me, that's like 89 to like 94. And so those are always like my favorite years. Um, obviously, uh, I mean, we all love well, a lot of us love Michael Jordan. The first Bulls team, like when they made it over the hump. That 91 year, that was fantastic. But for me, if we're going college, this is a curveball, and I doubt anybody that's watching this is even aware of this team. But mine is the uh, the 1992 Tulane Green Wave. <laughs> okay, all they, right. They had, they had the death penalty in the late 80s after Hot Rod Williams, and they came back with just a bunch of scrubs. Perry Clark was their head coach. They went 4-24 and the first year. They went like 500 the next year, and then the year after that, they went like 24 and six, and made the NCAA tournament and won a game, and it was like the most amazing thing that, yeah. that they'd ever experienced. The other thing that was really cool about them was that they played uh, two, they played ten kids, and they 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 subbed like lines. They uh-huh. had the, it was called the posse, yeah, and it was like it was like the energetic guys were like the second group, and they would come on like eight minutes in and it would just be like waves of steals and fast breaks. It yeah. was so much fun to watch. Uh, I think that happens a lot about the, the teams that really that grab you and then mm-hmm. hold your heart or the ones that maybe weren't supposed to be right. as good as they are, mm-hmm. or, you know, they just, just fighting above their playing weight. above themselves. Yeah. yeah playing as a unit. Uh, that's kind of where I'm coming from too. I mean, same thing. I mean, you got, you, you'll have so many people that love the unforgettables for, uh, mm-hmm. Kentucky, you know, coming off probation right. and, and, you know, Patino comes in that group. But for me, it's going to be 2003, 2003, uh, the 03 cats. I wanted it for that team. Just D up. That's and for, all I did. <laughs> and, for, and for Tubby more than yeah. I've ever wanted it for any team. And yeah. I mean, they, they win 
and nobody saw it coming. I don't feel like anybody saw it coming, but they won 26 straight. Mm. Uh, Bogans was unbelievable that year. You know, that was his senior year, I guess. Um, The way Eric Daniels and Chuck Hayes, who were just, you know, I mean, like, what, two stars, three stars? uh, And and Eric's just kind of this left-handed, crafty, Mm -hmm. you know, and the way they would pass it underneath, just get, they kind of had sharing a brain down there underneath. Um, man, I loved that squad. And one, and then, you know, Bogans turns that ankle, uh, in the elite eight or before the, the elite 16, eight game. So it turns in the sweet 16. Yeah. The and then you run Dwayne into Wade. Dwayne Wade mm-hmm. and, and, and you're, you're missing that key cog and that defense. Like you said, defense was everything for that team. And, uh, that ball line defense you needed, you needed him. So was, was what's his name coaching at Marquette at that time? Uh, Crean. Crean. Tom Crean. Yeah. Man, I hope he sends a check to Dwayne Wade every year <laughs> yeah. for his career. Uh, no, there's no question. <laughs> there's no question. Uh, but let's bring let's bring Coach back into this uh-huh. conversation. Uh, Joe, do you have you have a team that sticks out to you more than others? I mean, I think all, we all love the '92 team. Yeah. But my favorite team was probably the '98 team. Okay. You know, yeah. I'm a tubby guy. I've uh-huh. always been a tubby guy. Um, but to come back from those deficits yeah. game after yeah. game, yeah, you know how hard that is? Mm. Um, and just the uh, the unsung heroes, the pageants and the mills and the play, plays they made that year in order you know, to bring them a national championship, I thought was yeah. pretty remarkable. Yeah, I know people always talked about, you know, Tubby won with Rick's players, but it's like, man, it's not like those were like five-star guys. No. They were still there. That's right. I mean, yeah. that was Anthony Epps and, and, and Shepard and, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Wayne Turner, and Turner, you, yeah. Turner. And you hear about the infamous players only meeting where they had to, you know, they all got together and they had to mm-hmm. buy in. Yeah. And like, if we're going to do this, we've got to do it Tubby's way. And, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, they got it done. The, the thing I remember about um, that squad is, is my favorite player for a long time, for probably 20 years, just based on mostly on one performance was Wayne Turner, you know, against Duke. And just, they just couldn't stop God, him. Just mm-hmm. going to the just basket. Just working on yeah, abu- Abusing Wojciechowski. <laughs> Uh, and you know, and then and then uh, McGlore put Wojo in the in the rack on yeah. the middle of the floor, and Billy Packer screaming about yeah. it. And, oh, that was great. Yeah, good times. Uh, but we're asking you all. Uh, I, I hope we get lots of answers here, and then lots of different uh, input on on this. And um, let's see. So if you're watching on Facebook. Hit us in the comments. You don't have to be watching on Facebook. You don't even need it. You can hit us on the text machine, 502-353-023, whether you're watching live or, or one of the replays. Uh, just just send us an answer. And uh, there you go. So we'll let that percolate with you all. You all send those answers in. We'll check back in later. But we got to talk some Lady Flyers now. Mm-hmm. Um uh, the 11th straight 41st district championship and uh, four of the last five 11th region championships. Um, Coach, just, I guess, just reflect and, and tell us, speak, speak on the legacy that we've been building here. Well, we've had good families, and I think in 2024, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you've got to have the support of, of the home and the school and uh, in education in general. And we have some all-star people that are involved in our program, and we've been fortunate enough to have that for 21 years. Um, yeah, I mean, speak and, a little. I mean, that's such a good point because, like, it's more than just the coaching and right. even the players or the administration. I mean, it really does take everybody being involved and buying in and, and, right. and supporting all of those kids. So, uh, I, I just think time after time we've had different people say, "How can we help?" Mm-hmm. You know, and and when you get to just coach and you don't have to worry about mm-hmm. you know the support. He's running the, the, the drama part of it. Thing, thing, right, right, yes. you know. um, it makes a big difference mm-hmm. in, in the longevity of how long you want to do it. And, and secondly, <laughs> right. you know, a lot of these kids, they grew up watching us play in the state tournament. We have, I think we have three kids on this team whose older sisters played for me in the state oh, tournament. Wow. So it meant a lot to them for us to win Saturday night and get back to this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, our feeder system, Elkhorn Middle, we've always had great middle school situations with our coaches and the support from them. And, uh, you know, it's sort of one program united from the fifth grade on up. And mm-hmm. you got to have that continuity mm-hmm. in order to build something. And, um, and then this team is special because, you know, there's so many kids that have stepped up on different nights. Um, we've got great senior leadership from Alex Newton and Rachel Shopshire. They do the right things off the floor. They do the right things on the floor. Um, and more than anything else, um, 
you know, our, our whole student body, dance team, cheerleaders, band, all that stuff create an atmosphere that our kids enjoy. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, it, it's important at 1100 East Main that you win basketball games in girls' basketball. Mm -hmm. It's not that way everywhere. Sure. So we talked about, you know, in the question of the day, the different teams, different personalities. What What is – you mentioned the senior leadership. What What is this team that's maybe a little bit different than teams in the past that you think – really is the character, the makeup of the team this year? Well, I think they're a little bit goofy, but I think okay. they're about their business. <laughs> okay. You know, does that make sense? Yeah, they got to be a little, yeah. you can't know, be too serious. And, and that, the kids have changed. We all know that. But, mm -hmm. like, it, it is a um, – their number one goal from the day we started on June the 1st was to play tonight in Rep Arena. Mm -hmm. And we've had, you know, some nooks and crannies to get around throughout mm -hmm. the year because of, you know, a tough schedule, or maybe you, you know somebody's hurt. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah we, we we don't get many emails back when we send out <laughs> invites to come play. Um, but you know, it, it is um, they're unique, but at the same time, they understand what the standard is. And I think those two seniors have done a really good job of of holding everybody's feet to the fire and saying, "Hey, this is you know this is the ultimate goal," and and um, I'm I'm proud of them. Mm -hmm. So we get started tonight uh, at, at Rupp Arena, tip-off 8.30. ESPN2 tip time is what I tell people. <laughs> um, yeah, if, if, it does, you know, if, the, if the first game goes late, you can get on ESPN News. Mm -hmm. to yes, watch. yes. Um, no, that's not true. But, but uh, <laughs> so we want folks to go, right? I mean, support yes. the team. Yeah, we've, we've, had, we've had good support. We think we'll have a good crowd there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we really would like to see all of Frankfurt there. Yeah. You know, these kids that, you know, I tell people there's 263 teams, I think, play high school basketball in Kentucky. Mm. And yeah. when you're one of those 16 yeah. that get to go do this, you know, it is uh, very rewarding. And we want to give our kids uh, as top notch experience as possible. And that mm. means people in the seats, too. Yeah. Well, and I feel like Kentucky Sweet 16 is just such a – I mean, it's the only one left, right, that's an yes. all-class yes. tournament. Uh -huh. And it's such a unique – and I try to explain it to people in other places, and they just don't quite understand mm -hmm. how awesome it is that you just have big schools, little schools, and it's, mm -hmm. you know uh, – so it's it's a special, special tournament. It's awesome that you guys are participating once again. Yeah, we, we, um, we're we excited about it. I think it's going to be – a really good atmosphere for our kids, and we think North Laurel will bring a heck of a crowd too. Mm. Um, so uh, we hope it's loud and fun for everybody. Even though you and Franklin County have experience being in the Sweet 16, it's still there's got to be some nerves that go along with playing in Rupp. I would I would assume no matter how many times you've been there. Yes. Well, we're going up today to watch the one o'clock game, okay. just to get them in the building. Yeah. Sure. Um, you know, and and then we'll check into the hotel and things like that. And a lot of them have been there, but until the bright lights are on you, as we mm -hmm. say, it's a little bit different. And Do you find it different than uh, when when you used to go to to, to Diddle? I mean, mm -hmm. is it a, it's a different feeling in the in the gym, or is it a different feeling for the kids? Uh, is it a bigger stage or not? I, really? I think so. Yeah. I think the historical aspect of it, but mm -hmm. I also think it's just a big old room. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and you know when we were playing at NKU and 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 Diddle, we. You know, the fans were a little bit closer to yeah. you. Mm -hmm. you know, More like the a venue. really big high school gym yes. or, you know, yes. college gym. Right? The shooting uh, depth is different. It is yeah. different. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's all something you got to get used to, but all 16 teams have to get used to it. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see. But I, you know, I trust our kids uh, and I think they'll respond. Uh, it may just, you know, you got to get out of the gate a little better than you hope on nights like this mm -hmm. because you can't dig yourself a hole because you're so worried about the bright lights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you've been up there. Quite a few times. Have you ever caught a coach doing the Norman Dale <laughs> measuring? <that? laughs> I haven't, yeah. but I, I wouldn't rule that out if yeah, they gave us access right. to the play. I thought that was a very good part of the movie, but oh, um, that's great and true, you know. Yeah. So, but um, it is. Uh, it can be intimidating. Do there, you guys get a no chance doubt. to shoot around, or you no. know, just just go warm up <laughs> wow. before no. the game starts? And I was telling my wife this morning, I was up at three watching North Laurel some again, and I was looking at the itinerary that the KHSA sent you, and they they gave us thirty minutes this year to warm up. Usually it's twenty five, mm -hmm. so I don't, I think we'd be worn out <laughs> if we warmed up for thirty minutes. <laughs> yeah, but at right. least you can go out and shoot a little bit early, yeah. and then come yeah. back down, and then come back out, things right. like that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so there multi, there's a whole slate of games. What, what are the tick, are the tickets broken into to sessions or if you buy just a ticket for the game, game you just... can do either with the girls. It's a little bit different than the okay. boys, but okay. you can buy a single session ticket. It's just for the eight thirty game on Wednesday night only. Okay. 
You can buy the six uh, the six o'clock and eight thirty together. Okay. I'm not sure how they manpower that. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, khsaatickets.org. I think they're like ten fifty plus fees, taxes, things like that. It rolls in about fourteen fifteen bucks. Okay. Um, so people can can buy those online before they go, or uh-huh. I assume tickets available at the door if they show up. Right? Yeah, everything's electronic. You yeah. know, Rupp Arena is cashless. I will tell you that. Okay. So if Good you're going to go get that phenomenal ice cream, <laughs> bring your debit card. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you can do it at the ticket window with your okay. with your credit card. Yeah. So you're you're in the camp that it's as good as advertised, and because and, uh, some people say it's the, that ice cream's good, some people say it's overrated. I'd be willing to debate that debate that with those kids. It's, or, or I think adults. it's pretty good. I mean, I, 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 I've I've not heard anyone complain when they walked away from yeah. throwing that final napkin away once they I get agree. it completely. Uh, 100%. So, yeah. We we can't let you go. I can't let you go without talking just a little bit of Kentucky. Do you feel good about this squad uh, going into March? The the, boy, Kentucky, the Kentucky boys. Yeah. yeah, I feel better than yeah. I did <laughs> a month ago. Yeah. A, month ago. <laughs> a lot better. Yeah, um, we'll see. You know, I think it depends on matchups. You know, in, uh, in, yeah. in that tournament, I think it depends on venue. You know, what kind of crowd will they have? Are they going to send them off to you know Seattle, Washington, or somewhere? Right. Or will yeah. they get to play in? Indianapolis or Columbus or somewhere mm-hmm. like that. So. And one more. Do you, because I've been harping on this on the show, do you think what uh, Reed Shepard's doing, uh, considering who he is and where he's from, is as unique as I do? The, the, the way he absorbs pressure, what was expected of him, just how it doesn't seem to affect him. I, I'll be honest with you. I was one of those people that when I watched him in the state tournament, I thought. He's going to be this? No. Okay. I All did right. not. I okay. thought, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, gotcha. I, if it's gotcha. and, and, but you know, when you get on the floor with better players and you get on the floor with mm-hmm. a better atmosphere, makes you run faster, jump higher, mm-hmm. make better passes. Uh, I think it's the closest thing that we've had from a fan base perspective to the '92 team. Yeah, mm-hmm. because of the homegrown stuff. Yeah. And um, you know, I think there's a certain appreciation for that for every play that he makes. I've heard some people say that in, in high school and even in AU, he, he defers so much, and he still tends to do that a little bit. should be taking some more shots than he does. But, right. the, the, that, yeah, that, that might have kind of made him – people are surprised when he comes in here yes. and he's playing with better players. Yeah. Right. I agree. I totally agree. And I, I, th- I think he needs to shoot more. Yeah. You know, that's, right. that's it my... feels like he is starting to get a little more, you know, yeah. willing to, yes. just, to just shoot. Yeah. Right. And, uh, all right, well, then, if you think – if you had questions about him playing at this level – they're saying now he's like number maybe a top one. Two no, goes to show what I know. Right? Is that, is that, <laughs> yeah. that is my I'm not getting a, a scout just, evaluation job with the Pacers. Right. Okay, so well, um, so do you think? I mean, it just he keeps being able to play at the next level. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it's shown that he can make that leap. Can he make another leap to be able to play with the best players in the world? Well, I, yes, I do think so yeah. because he can shoot the basketball. Right. And I tell our kids all the time: you can go out and you can go work out. Yeah, and you can dribble around cones for an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but if you can't make shots, yeah, put the ball in the you hole. Got, yes, yeah. and you know the the final four final scores this year will not be twenty seven twenty six. Mm-hmm. Somebody's going to have to make a shot. Yeah, mm-hmm. and same thing in the NBA. You know, it's mm-hmm. entertainment, so they want points to be scored, and he can do that. So that's that's a feather in his hat. We've seen a, a lot of change in the, in the professional game and and down to college in in offense and shooting and you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you, have you seen that come down to the high school level? Yeah, or? a lot more screen and roll, single side ball screen stuff, yeah. you know, flat ball screens where they just try to isolate, you know, and we do it some too, but mm-hmm. we see it a lot more from a scouting perspective than yeah. we did, say, 10, 12 years ago. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. Oh, I just feel like we need to get Coach in here to just talk March Madness before the <laughs> tournament starts. And just well, he's, I can he's do got this other all stuff going on right yeah, now. Let's let him great. get through the uh, to this <laughs> yeah. tournament and maybe we'll all bring right. him back. Um, uh, we're so excited for you guys yeah. and really we'll be rooting for you every every game along the way we hope that, that there's several and uh, well we appreciate you know cable 10 has been very good to us uh, yeah. over the years you know back when we were first trying to get mm-hmm. to the state tournament. sure yeah and uh, we appreciate you guys and uh, everything you do for all the schools in Frankfurt because of you know the community game of the week things like that uh, it helps a lot of people that I get texts from, alumni, keep up with our team that mm-hmm. no longer live in Frankfurt. Mm-hmm. So we're very appreciative of that for sure. Well, we enjoy doing it, and, and we'll be rooting you guys on tonight, 830 Rupp Arena. Uh, get, get your tickets, get down there and support the Lady yep. Flyers. Yep. Get there early, get your ice cream. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah you got to get in early before the line gets too long. Yes. That's for sure. All uh, right, Coach. 
We're going to check in on weather. Um, it's it's heating up a little bit. It was, yeah. pretty, it was real nice yesterday, I think, uh, even warmer tomorrow. So uh, let's check in with ABC Storm Team meteorologist Dylan Godet. Good morning to our friends in Franklin County. Thank you for tuning in to Around 10. I'm ABC 36 Storm Team Meteorologist Dylan Day. Let's look at your weather headlines and three things you need to know weather-wise. We've got another warm one on the way today. Temperatures pushing 70 degrees this afternoon. Rain chances are increasing, especially as you head towards uh, the afternoon hours today. A spotty chance and then again as you head into tomorrow, a spotty chance during the day. But the rain chances really ramp up late Thursday night into Friday. We're also tracking a big cool down on the way next week. We may struggle to get out of the low 40s after we're hitting the, say, mid 70s tomorrow. Looking at future cast, timing things out for you again. Chance we sneak in an isolated shower or two through the midday today into the overnight hours. Most areas will be staying dry. Tomorrow morning, notice how there are some showers uh, just to the west. They may sneak in. Uh, temperatures really trying to warm up, though, towards the afternoon hours on your Thursday. Thursday night, Friday, though, watches this line of showers and thunderstorms move south and eastward. That's going to be infiltrating the area, bringing us some rain chances, likely a wet start to your Friday. That won't be raining all day, though. We'll try to dry out a little bit into the afternoon hours. Today, though, partly cloudy, warm 70. Hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed that go day yesterday. If you didn't, you still should have plenty of dry time today to enjoy maybe a round of golf or uh, a nice stroll through the park. Tonight, 52, scattered clouds, mild temperatures with a southwesterly breeze. And looking ahead at your full seven-day forecast. So we've got that rain and storm chance tomorrow. But then as you head into your Friday, that's where we'll be tracking most of that rain, especially during the morning hours. Mainly dry for Saturday, your St. Patrick's Day. Isolated rain chance, but I may be lowering that as well. Looks a little drier for Sunday, but we are expecting that drop in temperatures. Won't get out of the low 40s next Monday. And now we're joined by Brent Wallace and Shelby Harbor from the YMCA of Central Kentucky. Uh, good morning, guys. Good morning. Good to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having us. Um, Brent, uh, well, I think one thing we're going to talk about is, is just we've got sports coming up, right? That's true. Yeah, we do have sports coming up. I'm excited to get our soccer mm -hmm. season started. We are serving nearly 300 children in our community, mm -hmm. ages 3 to 12 years old, out at Lakeview Park here in Frankfurt. And uh, registration's done, right? Like, we're, we're set to go here. Yeah, we're set to go, uh, ready to start some games with the nice weather we've been having. Do y'all need any, uh, is there any help? Like, could you use volunteers out there to help if you, you know, if people can want to yeah, so yeah, we're kind of all set, but anybody okay. that's interested in volunteering, they're more than welcome okay. to come help out. Um, and then what's our next What's our next season that people should be on the lookout for registration coming? Registration coming would be soccer again in, in the, the fall. fall. Okay. Yeah, and they okay. can visit our website to see more information about okay. our sports yeah. programs. So if you missed out in the spring, or if you're in the spring, set yourself a reminder so you don't miss out mm -hmm. registration in the fall. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, summer camp. I've, I've been talking to the guys here as as a parent of two, uh, you know, adolescent kids. I, I can't handle them all summer in my house, <laughs> so we need to get them out and active. Uh, and we're trying to map out. You know, you got you got you got summer trips and and things. And you just like fill in the blanks of the weeks. Um, do you, there, there's opportunities for summer camp at Second Street. Yeah, we um, will be hosting summer camp at Second Street School from June 10th until July 18th. Okay. Our hours of operation will be 7.30 a.m. to 5.30. Oh, that's nice, because some camps are like, it's like 9 to 2. And I'm like, oh, what's that? That <laughs> no, doesn't help. So we're all oh, day, 7.30 a.m. to 5.30. Okay. And what kind of stuff will kids be doing? We go on some field trips. We'll go to the pool, bowling. Okay. Um, every week is like a special theme, so we do a lot of like crafts and hands-on activities based off that theme as well. And I'm assuming you don't need to do the entire summer. So if like this week or that week works, just register for that week. Yeah, you could do all six weeks or week by week. Okay. Um, and registration for that is open now uh, at the YMCA's website? Yeah, ymcacky.org. Okay. Um, I'm familiar with that because we do we do some other ones. The, the Bar Y is a guy. I know that mm -hmm. you guys aren't talking about that, but that's a great uh, camp out in, in what is that Woodford County or is it in Fayette County? I'm not sure. It's right on the line. Yeah. It's actually it's actually castle. right next to the castle, the yeah. Kentucky Castle. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Okay. Uh, what else? Anything else in new sports or childcare you wanna you wanna touch on? If um, anybody's interested in being a camp counselor as well, they can okay. visit our website. Um, there are applications open on there. Okay. How old do you have to be to do that? You have to be at least eighteen. Okay. And for camp as well, our ages they must complete kindergarten. Where ages like if okay. you complete kindergarten through twelve, like camp. going into first grade yeah. next year. Okay. okay. Cool. Uh, can we talk about the annual impact campaign? Um, what just just fill us in what's what's going on there yeah so one of the unique things about the YMCA is that most people understand that the YMCA is actually a nonprofit organization and the biggest thing that we do to make us a nonprofit is each year the community comes together and we raise funds so children have the same opportunity to participate in YMCA so as Shelby was talking about all of our child care and our sports programs we have roughly 30 to 35 percent of those kids who actually receive financial assistance hmm. and so um, the YMCA we we actually are um, running the campaign right now. It's called the Annual Impact Campaign. Anyone out there listening, we encourage you all to, to you know, think with your heart and give with your wallet to help support these kids and families that really need that extra push. So whenever we think about kids that are going into camp, that are going into sports, you know, you look at a, a ten roster team and think about there could be three or four of those kids that might not be able to be on that team mm -hmm. if we didn't offer that assistance. So whenever people think about you know the YMCA and the assistance that we provide, they think, oh, well, the YMCA will discount that for you. Well, that's true, we do, but the money that we're discounting just doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. Right. The money that we're actually raising from the community helps to support those activities. Mm -hmm. um, so just to maybe give us an example, what would be a, a ballpark figure that it would, you know, to, to, to support uh, one child, a sponsor, kind of one child? Uh, mm -hmm. So with, uh, with a sports program, $50 would help to allow a child to be mm -hmm. involved in one season of sports. Mm -hmm. For summer camp, a $100 donation could help a child go into summer camp for one full week. Okay. A thousand dollars could help um, a child go there for for ten weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that the the Second Street School, that the summer camp that they provide, they run on the Second Street uh, City School schedule, which is why it's six weeks long. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, with with all of the the programs that we have, we also have the the daycare center, which is actually a preschool, mm -hmm. which is for six weeks old. Uh, actually, it might be a little bit older than that. Go to the website to find out the exact. Mm -hmm. But up to five years old for that, mm -hmm. and it's at the Crayon Club, located mm -hmm. over on the uh, on the east side of the town, behind Cracker Barrel and we have around 85 kids daily out there and there's a large mm -hmm. portion of those kids that need assistance as well so the money that we bring in helps go directly back into the community so if you're out there and you're listening we just encourage you to to help support the YMCA and all mm -hmm. the kids and families that really rely on the assistance that we provide and if you if you'd like to donate to that um, to the impact campaign I, I'm assuming you just go to the website mm -hmm. and is it is it if I go to the website, is it easy to, easy to find there to target that? Yeah, it's very simple to find. If you go to the YMCA website, it's ymcacky.org, and there will be a link on there that says Give. And once you click the Give button, it will give you the option on how to do so. So we actually have a lot of families that if they want to give maybe even a larger amount, they can even break that out into like monthly payments. So if someone mm, wants to okay. let's say, if they want to give $1,000, but they can't afford to give $1,000 sure. right now, sure. well, but maybe they could give $100 a month, mm -hmm. something like that broken out. So they're able to really make an impact in a, in a very special way. Awesome. Um, other, other things, I mean, folks, obviously, uh, the YMCA out of Prevention Park is a great resource if folks who want to get get in shape or, yeah. or, or, or exercise. That's a, that's a great spot for people locally. Yeah, absolutely. So at the Prevention Park location, we have, we have a great wellness center. People mm -hmm. go out there and work out all the time. But we also have free fitness classes for mm -hmm. all of our members. So we have roughly 30 classes per week. Mm -hmm. And during the month of March, we're actually offering a promotion called Try the Y Tuesdays. So if you're in the area, you'd like to try the YMCA on a Tuesday, just come in. You'll be able to come in for free that day. Mm -hmm. And if you decide to join, we'll waive that, that joiner fee, which will save you an immediate $50. Okay, awesome. And uh, schedule, again, I'm sure on the website, YM mm -hmm. ymcacky.org, right? Correct, okay. correct. Awesome. Um, you guys have a, have a did, you, did you hear our question of the day? Oh. I, have an, an I, I, was prepping, I was prepping Shelby <laughs> behind the scenes, saying, like, they might ask you that. And she's like, she, and she yeah, said, I'm going to have to. I have an answer, but I don't know the date. Okay. I just know the date. Okay, okay. Well, that's fine. That's well, we might be able to help. Go yeah. ahead. 
I think it's the 2015 UK basketball team with like Devin Booker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Anthony the 38. And, yeah, 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 yeah. The that's it, uh-huh. That was 2015. That was a great year. It was yeah, fun. It was, uh, Up it until was, the very end. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's another one where an injury, you know, I think if Poitras doesn't get hurt because yeah. if you think about that UCLA game where they just wiped him out mm-hmm. early in the season and then Poitras get hurt and you, get, you run into um, – Wisconsin, and he yeah. didn't have anybody that could guard Sam Decker, and right. I think Poitras is that guy. Yeah, yeah. that was, was so. They were so good, insanely good. Yeah, good answer, Shelby. Well, what about you, you, you know that the funny thing about that, I am one of those very superstitious guys. I played sports growing up, and uh-huh. you know you have to wear the same socks or whatever. Well, that game that they played Wisconsin, I was watching with my brother. Is it all your fault, bro? <laughs> no, 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 no. I tried to help the team. I was watching the game with my brother, and one of his friends decided to join us right after oh. halftime, and that's whenever oh. Kentucky started lo- losing. Lie, yeah. I told my brother, I was like, you, you gotta need to tell your friend to leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's making us lose. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he thought I was joking. I was not joking. No, he no, needed no. to go. That's serious. He needed to go. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it, I mean, the guys well, in, in my house in 1998 helped guide us to a championship then because if you weren't sitting in the right seats, then you had to change. And there was, I mean, everybody knows these things work. Right. Yeah. So, right. yeah, if, if somebody Absolutely. comes in and throws the whole thing my, off. My biggest thing is for sure where I'm at in, yeah. the, in the house. Because there are a few different places I might watch. <laughs> right. And based on how the game is going, it means whether I can leave where I'm at or not. And Sometimes you, you cannot get up to use the restroom. Right. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. you need to. If I'm standing, to, uh-huh. you need to switch to a different recliner. Yeah. I mean, you just, you just have to do what's best for the team. Right. We're all sacrificing <laughs> yeah. here. I'll turn it off if I have to. Like, you know, if I came in late oh. and then all of a sudden they start losing, like, yeah, oh, yeah. I can't watch no, the no, rest I've, of this. I've right? done that this year a couple yeah. times. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, Harvey, have you, did you play YMCA sports uh, ever? No, you know, I didn't down in, in New Orleans. I mean, there was a YMCA, yeah. but that was just not where we were, we were doing things. Yeah. So. I did basketball okay. uh, and uh, and was fantastic. I'm sure. It, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Sophie here in Frankfurt did mm-hmm. volleyball. Yeah. And so, yeah. I know uh, Ella's done it. Kathy's daughter's done it. Done YMCA yeah. soccer and stuff. Yeah. So, so uh, it's a great, great program. And just a reminder that that annual impact campaign is going on. And uh, like Brent said, you know, you don't have to do it all at once. You, you can set it up and just do a little bit at a time. But just, just to think, just even if you can just help that one kid go to camp or, or play a sport and how it, that can change literally the rest of their lives, depending on, you know, so uh, a, a great, great cause there. So, uh, and then the signups for camps open now. So don't miss out on that. Cause mm-hmm. oftentimes you're like, Oh my gosh. Right. Yeah. All mm-hmm. so. Y-M-C-A-K, uh, C-K-Y dot org. Correct. Right. Thank you guys for coming in. Anything yeah. else you all that we missed we yeah. don't want to like, push you off right, right. no I, th- I thought it was amazing we certainly okay. appreciate the opportunity to come out here Cableton's always been a, a big supporter of the YMC and we greatly appreciate that Thank we you appreciate guys. you all I yeah. hope to see you again soon yeah. that's great uh, Harvey we'll uh, take a break yep. next we're gonna check in with our question of the day okay we've got uh, more community calendar coming up lots of things to get to all of that Head and of more week. after this in today's fast-paced housing market you need realtors with experience who understand that timing is essential when finding the perfect home for the right price. Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher are here to ensure that you and your family have a positive experience from start to finish. Real estate is what we do. And families are why we do it. Meet Jeff and Abby, your compass in the new age of advertising. Your guide on the trail to new business. Because these days, you need a guide. Your customers are spread out everywhere. And you need to be able to reach them anywhere. On the internet, on cable, on streaming services. Wherever they are, we are. Let Jeff and Abby make the perfect custom plan for your business and your budget. FBB Advertising, we're everywhere. Contact us and talk to Jeff or Abby today. Harvey, we asked our viewers what their favorite basketball team of all time was. Uh, do you have the Facebook pulled up? I'm just now doing it. Uh, <laughs> Zach McDonald says pretty much any Dennis Rodman team. Okay. That's interesting, big, but not surprising. Big for Dennis, Paul. yeah. Uh, are you, are you a big uh, Dennis Rodman fan? Uh, I wouldn't say that. I got no. nothing against him, though. And, yeah. and, man, the dude played hard. He did. And he's, he's definitely one of those, like, if he's on your team, then you're like, oh, man, he's the best. Yeah. But when you're right. going against him, the worm. 
Yeah. Uh, he's frustrating. Yeah, I mean, because he just doesn't was, stop. It's just yeah. like... That's golly. what he wanted to do. He yeah. wanted to get in your head, and he wanted to just drive you nuts. And yeah. yeah uh -huh. One of the best to ever do it. Um, the I'm Checking in on the, the text machine here. Yeah. How's that working? Oh, it's it's somebody just asking where they can where they can find us on the TV guide. Okay, um, but uh, we're on channel ten. It's on channel ten and five ten. Yeah, yeah. And uh, or you know if you're if you're not on if you're if you're out and about we're on Facebook and, and YouTube as well, right? Yep, that's yeah. right. Well, what do you think? Should we do uh, the crack open the the? the that's all we there? got so far. We don't have any more favorite no, teams. Just one comment. That oh, was come it. on, guys. I know. Oh wait, no. Here's one more. Okay, okay Leslie Smith. She's chiming in here. She says the 1978 team, UK team. Kyle Macy, Kyle Macy and and uh, Rick Rovey, Rick Rovey and the Goose. The Goose. James Lee. Yeah. Um, there you go. That was, that was before my time. I was on the planet, uh -huh. but not a, uh, not a super engaged UK fan. <laughs> it's like point. one years old. So, uh -huh. yeah. But mom and dad, I, I could, they they had a they had a drawing of the team that I would always kind of look at. It was a, it was like a caricature of the whole team where they yeah. had like big heads. Oh, and, right. You know, like because anytime you got a championship team, you need all kinds of sell all kinds of things sure. and artworks. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, let me thinking back to just a little sidebar here. We were talking basketball. Uh, thinking back to that 78 team, um, you know, uh, here we talked to coach about the changing uh, dynamics of, of basketball. We're so focused around the three-point line now. Yeah. Uh, some people think that's boring. Yeah. Especially in the NBA where they just stand out there and shoot threes all the time. Um, and, and the proposal I heard was mostly just specifically to the all-star game because that one's out of control. Mm -hmm. What do you think about doing away with the three-point line and going back to where mid-range <laughs> jumpers – and yeah. you know what I mean? Pounding it inside. I think I like it. I think, you know, maybe it goes too far inside. If you take that three point, the, the, yeah. the way it spaces the floor and allows some movement. You're and right. It's, it's a prettier game. I think maybe it, it just needs to be a little bit further out. That might help. And maybe but then yeah, you, keep but then, pushing it out more. But you don't want the, you know, shooting percentage to drop or just yeah. the clang and threes all the time. Like that doesn't sound right. Fun. Right. So, I don't know. And Just you can only go out so far have. on the edges. You're already got kind of straight lines over yeah. there, you know. Yeah. They can't go We're, fixing, we're going to work on fixing basketball. Uh, <laughs> Not that it's broken because we still enjoy watching it. Let's open up the community calendar. Uh, Harvey, Harvey, do you love the do you love the cloud storage? I do. I'm a big fan of cloud storage. If you want to learn even more about it, you can do that in the community room at the library on Wednesday today. Uh, right now, basically. head Just go right now to the library because at 11 a.m. it's going to start. The cloud is uh, often mysterious and confusing. I think it can be for some people that don't understand, yeah. you know, what it is just, it's just the cloud. Uh -huh. A lot mean. of security things you need to know. So, uh, they'll, they'll teach you all of it. Just head down there. Well, I'll give you this example from my world. My, okay. my child is a Minecraft. He likes playing Minecraft. Yeah. And he wants to host a Minecraft server where his friends can come play. <laughs> okay. And then, you know, okay. he can set yeah. up all, you know, how he wants it set up. But he wants to run it on the computer in the house, mm -hmm. in which case for people to connect to it, you're exposing your entire network to yeah. whatever. And so uh, so talking to some people, it was like, well, he needs to do it in the cloud because then you get it off of your local network. It's up in the cloud and they can all go up there and nobody's coming into mm -hmm. your space. Mm -hmm. So good, good use case for the cloud. Next, he's going to be he's going to be Bitcoin mining. Oh go. no, he would. He's already looked into it, and he's just like it's, it doesn't. He's like it doesn't make sense, like the amount of you know time and energy it takes to do it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna have to. I got some questions to ask him. Please uh, don't. <laughs> Tell me about uh, amazing automata. Uh, this is also at the Paul Sawyer Public Library. That's uh, this afternoon from 4:30 to 5:30 at the Youth Program Room. Older than the pyramids, more prevalent than dinosaur bones. Predating electricity by centuries. Turns out some of the most beloved and well-preserved artifacts of the ancient world dating all the way back to caveman times are simply toys. From kings to peasants, everybody has always needed and loved toys. Tweens in grades three through five join us as we make our own versions of some of the old world's neatest toys. 
Uh, you want to learn how to make natural bird feeders? You can do that today, uh, 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. at Earth Alchemy on Taylor Avenue. Uh, she's going to teach you a variety of ways, a variety of ways to make natural homemade bird feeders. Uh, so check that out. All right. Uh, <laughs> Yoga for Beginners is uh, at the Public Library tonight from uh, 6 to 7 in the River Room. Uh, certified instructor Grace Rogers will lead participants in breathing exercises, simple physical postures with some flowing in between, and relaxation. Please wear comfortable clothing and bring a yoga mat if you have one. Do you have a yoga mat? Uh, my wife does. I could probably borrow it. Do you ever do yoga? No. Have you ever done yoga? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little, little stretch. A little stretching. It's good for your body. It is. I agree. Uh, how about a little nonfiction discussion group Ooh. at the library in the community room also today for uh, this evening from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's, they do a bi-monthly discussion group. Uh, and in March, they're discussing Invisible Women by Caroline Criado Perez. And everybody's welcome at this one. Is bi-monthly twice a month or every, it's every other, other month? right? I don't know. I think it's every other. Okay. Uh, the homeschool club at the public library uh, at the youth program room on Thursday from 2.30 to 3.30. Homeschool families with children of all ages uh, join us for an hour of exploration. Uh, Registration is not required. How, let's do Emerging Leader March Madness, uh, Thursday, March 14th, um, and Friday, March 15th, from 5 to 7 at Porter's on Taylor Avenue. Bring your business cards, and, and they're going to do some mingling down there with Emerging mm -hmm. Leaders. Okay. Uh, the Teen Advisory Group at the Paul Story Public Library Youth Program Room tomorrow from 5 to 6. That's Thursday. Uh, join us for our monthly tag meeting. Earn service hours, connect with others, and make your voice heard. All teens in grades 6 through 12 are welcome. Registration is not required. We have a home energy efficiency workshop at the library in the River Room Thursday the 14th from 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, join Bluegrass Green Source for a home energy efficiency workshop where you'll gain insights into the current energy landscape and get hands-on experience with a home energy audit kit. Learn simple DIY improvements that uh, can help you lower your energy consumption. Please register for this one because the space is limited. Uh, tomorrow from 6 to 7 in the community room in the Paul Sawyer Public Library, professional development has never been easier with Win Learning's online state-recognized career red readiness modules. You have the opportunity to earn credentials in the following areas. Digital literacy, career readiness, and essential skills. Join us as we explore lesson one of the Kentucky Essential Skill Courseware, thinking critically and solving problems. In this lesson, students uh, will learn how to effectively adapt uh, to new information and circumstances in the work environment. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm reminded tomorrow, March 14th, is, uh, is Pi Day. Okay. We're not going to have a show, so I just want to wish everybody a happy Pi Day. You, uh, you know like P.I. I'd... Day? Yeah. Yeah. It was 314. Yeah. What's your favorite pie, though? Favorite pie, I guess uh, I'd go hot apple with uh, ice cream, vanilla ice cream. Okay. Wow. What about you? Uh, uh, Coconut. I don't. Cream? I don't really do pies. It's not my thing. But I, the one time I went to a wedding and they had some kind of silt. Uh, I, don't, I don't. It wasn't a derby pie. Uh, it's a useless answer. Okay. I'm sorry. Like <laughs> One good, time like I had a pie that I got. I thought it was pretty good. I like a good, good chocolate silk pie. Yeah. Know, with like a graham cracker crust. Yeah. Um, how about some Thursday night magic? You like a little Thursday night magic? At the library uh, in the youth program room, uh, 6.30, 7.30 p.m. Magic the Gathering. Harvey loves it. It's a collectible card game where you can play with friends and discover new worlds. Uh, this one's for teens in grades 6 through 12, though. Connect with other MTG players and enjoy casual night playing in commander format. Okay. Do you want to explain that? or Nope. Uh, okay. It takes too long. So right. just, you have okay. to Google it. Bring your own deck if you have one. But it, uh, don't worry. They have uh, prox some proxies available, but okay. registration is not required. All right. Uh, at the Kentucky Historical Society on Friday uh, at 630, <clears throat> learn about uh, all about media past and present. Um, 
media is all around us. We're constantly being bar- bombarded by TV, movies, ads, music, blogs, and tweets. But do we control media or does it control us? On this journey, cadets will take uh, stock of different forms of media from the past to the present, but also reimagine a piece of media using iMovie to get the message out about something important to their lives. The overnight concludes with a morning celebration, breakfast, and a pledge to cultivate new media skills. For the overnight portion of the program, participants will sleep inside of our Kentucky Journey exhibit. Cozy up to a Model T, sleep tight in a coal mine, or rest your head on a flatboat. Uh, please note one parent chaperone is required to attend for each troop. So this is Girl Scouts uh, from Friday, 630 until Saturday at 10 a.m. Who wouldn't want to sleep in a museum? That sounds amazing. Do you think uh, Robin Williams will pop up? Maybe. Could be. Owen Wilson? Yeah. Okay. Um, Harvey, this week we have a happy tale from Lifehouse for animals with the toast of Tin Wolf. Uh, while Toast has been adopted and his new family wishes to remain anonymous, we wanted to give uh, Lifehouse and Tin Wolf in their flowers for saving Toast after uh, seeing him get dumped by a previous owner. Here's more. We have a happy tale to share with you. Toast, the treeing walker coonhound, was found by our friends at the Tin Wolf Inn here in Frankfurt. Toast was abandoned in a rural area, and luckily our Tin Wolf friends were there to see it. Toast became our first dog to live at Tin Wolf Inn as an adoptable lifehouse dog. They helped us learn more about Toast, and within days, he was adopted by a wonderful family. Toast now lives a cushy life with his family and lots of room to run and play. Congrats to Toast. Uh, Congrats to everybody involved for saving a life. And if you want to contribute to the care of any Lifehouse animals, you can visit lifehouseforanimals.org to make a donation. Uh, Toast looks like a good boy. Yeah, he's a cutie. Um, let's see here, Harvey. Do you want to talk any FPB stuff? Uh, well, I, I will mention, uh, Senate bill 220 is being heard at a committee, um, hearing this morning. I think it's the, uh, the committee on natural resources and energy the Senate committee. Um, so we'll see what comes of that. And mm-hmm. then we'll certainly let you guys know, um, you know, where we're at after that happens and uh, you know again appreciate the con- continued support uh, of all the community and um we'll uh, we'll do our best to you know mm-hmm. keep you updated and 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 keep fighting the fight um yep yeah, very good and, and we'll, we'll let yeah let you know what uh, comes out of that uh let's find out what's coming up on cable 10 Well, uh, tonight, that means it's Bill Miller night. We got uh, a, a quadruple blast of Whoa. global connections from five all the way until seven. And then after that, we'll have the city commission uh, special work session from Monday night. And then uh, on pie day, what, we'll, we'll, what can people watch while they're eating their favorite pies Thursday night? Uh, how about the Frankfurt Heritage Lectures uh, at 5 p.m.? It's General James Wilkinson's Betrayal from December of 2023. And at 7 p.m., Heart of the Turf, Racing's Black Pioneers from February of 2024. All right. And then on Friday, we'll be back here at 10 a.m. with a, a live edition of Around 10. Uh, and then in the honor of the uh, Lady Flyers Sweet 16 appearance, we're going to show some games from uh, this past season and the district tournament. So starting at five, we'll have three uh, instant classics of the Lady Flyers, and um, hopefully we'll be we'll be celebrating uh, a run deep into the Sheet 16 mm-hmm. on Friday night. Uh, yep, at 8 p.m., that district championship game uh, from March 1st. Uh, saw the Great Crossing boys had a yeah, they quite had, had the a buzzer it, beater to, to beat uh, Lexington Catholic, I think, in the 11th region. Yeah, and go to the Sweet 16, so yeah. Uh, quite the ending there. Uh, let's heat things up, Harvey. Did you see on uh, on uh, Dylan's forecast that we might get a little little wintry mix 
like oh, the I day did. before spring starts. I missed that. Next week. I missed that. So, yeah. Uh, I saw the, the some of that kind of stormy weather. Uh, was that tomorrow or the next day? But um, yeah, uh, I, I can do without the wintry mix. Yeah, same. You mentioned this uh, when when Coach was here, but uh, Reed Shepard listed as number one in the latest Ringer mock draft. The Ringer, uh, if you don't know, is um, Bill Simmons's yep uh, I'm website. Big fan of the Ringer, and I, it's not a uh, you know fly by night. No, I mean they clearly you know they've got good no. people working there. Number 15 in your programs and possibly number one in the draft, according to the latest mock draft uh, released by the Ringer. Uh, London, Kentucky's finest, Reed Shepard, is projected to go to the San Antonio Spurs as the number one pick in this year's NBA draft. Uh, that would pair him with superstar rookie Victor Winbanyama. Uh, it's not a bad place to end up. Well, now, they haven't done the lottery, though, yet. That's usually that's true. In, uh, they've got the best chance, I guess, right, at I this point. Worst record, yeah, right? Yeah, right. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, they could that that first pick could end up going anywhere, I guess. Um, they uh, Reed Shepard not altogether different. Everybody wants to compare him. Who does who does he project as in the NBA? Uh, Manu Ginobili's not too far off the mark, okay. I would think. Yeah. I think that's, you know, kind of a crafty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think he plays – I mean, Manu didn't play much defense. <laughs> I think Shepard might yeah. be a little bit better. Maybe a little, yeah. yeah. Um, this is mind-blowing to me. I, I mean, I guess I'm surprised that he's played it as well as he as he has. But even so, it's just the fact that he could be number one. Uh, it, I mean, you, you had people like, going into the season, there was debates about – I mean, how much is he going to play? Uh huh. Is he good? Like, you know, does, right. Maybe is he going to get 10 minutes a game or yeah. whatever? He's the bottom recruit in this recruiting class, rankings wise. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, would he score 32 against Mississippi State and then 27 against Tennessee? I yeah. mean, if he could, if they make a run, he's obviously going to be very involved. And if he continues yeah. to score at the level that he's scoring, I don't know how you could argue against it. I mean, he's. For a long time, he shot 60% for half the right. season. He was shooting 60% from three. Now? 48 or 50? 50s. He's, he's, he's above 50. Just add it. Uh, I mean, those guys don't grow on trees. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you add in a skill set beyond mm -hmm. just the, the shooting. Yeah. He, he, has to, he has to get enough attempts to stay above the attempts line, but he'll be, uh, if he stays where he's at right now, he'll, he'll be the, the best shooter that Kentucky's ever had. Yeah. Uh, and they've had some good ones. Um, elsewhere in the Ringers mock draft, Rob Dillingham, Dilly, yeah, uh, is projected to go at number eight. Even if this, and I saw him top five like a couple of weeks ago. Even if this chalk doesn't hold for the two of them, uh, they're still sol solidly in the top ten across all mock draft boards. You can watch the dynamic duo in the SEC tournament starting this Friday night at 7 p.m. on uh, SEC Network. That's channel 534 on our your own uh, Frankfurt Plant Board cable. Yep. Or you can stream it on the ESPN app. That's right. My FPV login. Um, if you're a an NBA general manager, let's say you have the first pick. Mm -hmm. Is Shepard your is Shepherd your choice? Well, I, I heard I don't know anything about anybody else in this draft to be honest. Apparently, uh, well, so it's uh, kind of a weak class. Olivier Sars' brother is like the, apparently the the next guy. He's been playing over in France, I think. Okay, I heard somebody said like there's a couple Australians that were like mm -hmm. the the top two. Yeah. Uh, well, let me ask you this: Just between Reed and Dillingham, if you could choose one of those guys to oh. build a franchise around, yeah, wow. Who? I mean, I, as much as I love Reed, I almost feel like Dillingham has a higher ceiling as a guy that could just be a, you know, a top five player in mm -hmm. the NBA. Mm -hmm. Whereas I don't know, that, but but I mean, I'm not going to argue Reed has played amazing. You know, yeah, but, and I kind of think it depends on what my team needs. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you hear a lot of coaches starting to say, like, Re, you know, Reed Shepard's like having a, a coach on the floor. You got that old yeah. uh, that old nugget, and and I think there's something to be said for that. I think there's something to be said for you know putting him in the number one spot. The fact that he is not phased by pressure, and yeah. if I can bring that in, like, and I know he's steady Eddie, mm -hmm. uh, that means a lot to me. L let me uh, 
has it concerned you at all in the last few games that he's made a couple of mistakes late in the game? <laughs> and because it, you know, I'm like, man, maybe he's yeah. not as steady Eddie as we think. But then, well, I think it, I think Cal said yes that he just there's he doesn't he, play differently, right? He you know? keeps playing as loose, and right. so he's going to try stuff even at the very end of the and game. I'm, I guess I'm good with that, but I worry that when you get into the tournament, that the margin for error is so small. Yeah, that, that yeah. You, you it know, could that cost could, you, yeah. um, but you got to ride with it. Just I would like, like him to be a little more careful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, honestly, what I worry about more is what Cal said. He's like, I might have to, you know, put him on the bench at the end of a game. Like, you, wait, stop! No, no that's stop. ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, uh, we got wallabies. Okay, Harvey. We love animals here on round ten. Um, in what has to be the cutest stampede ever. Golfers at a course in Victoria, Australia, had their game interrupted by dozens of kangaroos hopping through the course. Stephen Roche posted a video showing the fair dinkum stampede of kangaroos. Wow, that's a lot. Oh, that is a lot of kangaroos that appeared uh, during his recent game of golf at the hair. Would that scare you? Like, I mean, they don't seem mean, but that's a lot of them. A lot of anything is like, a yeah. lot, you know, that many squirrels coming I'm, at you. You're I'm like, staying oh out of the way. It, kangaroos will mess you up. <laughs> they are, they are aggressive. Um, and, you know. It was during his recent game of golf at the Heritage Golf and Country Club, and apparently it was only somewhat of an odd sighting. We have kangaroos on our two courses, uh, but I've never seen this before, Roche want, uh, wrote. He can be heard in the video asking the marsupials to, quote, not stand on my golf ball. Mm. So he's, he was concerned about a stroke penalty yeah, as, a, yeah, as yeah. a kangaroo has bumped into his ball. A second golfer shared his own video taken from another angle, and he said the parade of kangaroos felt like it went forever. Where the kangaroos are coming from or going seems to be a mystery, but in probably the most Australian part of the story, neither men seemed to be concerned about what a stampede of kangaroos might be running from. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's, uh, that would be the concerning part for me. Is like, what, what's coming after the kangaroos? Uh, all right. So, what do you think? We're good? Yeah, I think we're probably time to wrap it up. Yeah, any takeaway? I didn't get a chance any, to... Anything else on, on Facebook real oh, quick? Oh, uh, I guess that's <clears> good. <throat> uh, any takeaways from... Uh, I didn't get my, my Academy Award. Oh, Andy Krause says, hey. So, hey, Andy. Um, and David Columbia says, uh, the 0910 Murray State Racers. <laughs> okay, all right. And that was... Oh, I, I don't know if you heard the Classic. chuckle from, uh, from <laughs> Zach McDonald. Um that was the year that Isaiah Kanan made uh, the half court shot from one knee in the upset Vanderbilt in the NCAA tournament yeah. first round. Yeah, I remember. That was his senior year. Uh, that was in a good run when Moorhead beat Louisville, uh, I guess, mm -hmm. the year after that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so I didn't get a chance to get my, my Academy Awards after. I do want to pat myself on the back, try not to sprain my elbow, but I did get 19 out of 23. That's pretty on my good. Picks. Pretty good. And uh, super, super excited that. Uh, that Anatomy of a Fall won for best uh, screenplay, and that Zone of Interest won for best sound. I think those were my two favorite uh, winners. Have you seen either of those? No, nope. okay. I have not. Maybe you should. Maybe. You're not really into movies, though. I'm, Just I'm Marvel movies. movies? I, uh, not these days. <laughs> no, not these days. Um, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, search for Cable 10, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Well, I don't know what's happening in my voice right now. <clears throat> um, if you have any questions and comments or you want to share your community event, you can contact us at Cable 10 at FEWPB.com or use the text machine by texting 502-353-0233. Uh, what should they do if they want to uh, leave us a a review. Scan that QR code. Uh, it'll take you to Google Review, and uh, we'd love a five-star review from you about around 10 or any of your experiences with, with uh, the plant board. Uh, it helps other folks uh, you know, find us, and, and we appreciate the support. Um, thanks to Joey Thacker. Thanks yeah. to Brent Wallace and Shelby Harbor for coming on today. Yeah. Uh, really nice to have them. And, um, yeah, thanks to uh, Paw Paw and Zach Hubbard and David Columbia uh, for the work they do on the show. And Brett. Also Brett, I guess. Also Brett. Yeah. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. And remember, if it happens around town. It's right here on Around Town.
Around 10 is brought to you by Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher. You need realtors who can help navigate the current fast-paced real estate market. So choose local realtors that treat you like family because real estate is what they do and families are why they do it. 